This is Salinas Valley State Prison. It's essentially the end of the line. The worst of California's criminal offenders get sent here. This year they're on track to have over 700 assaults. They're letting us inside to have a look because that's progress. It used to be so much worse. Oh yeah, that's quite the sign, huh? Yeah. I, it, does this mean like don't touch anything? <laughs> yeah, pretty means pretty much means that if you touch the inner wiring, um, you're gonna end up like the photo up there, which is lethal electrified fence. So anybody that tries to go across that fence is gonna be electrocuted to death. All right, stay away from the fences. Yeah. About six months ago, we're running on solar power during the day now too. So as long as the sun's out. Are, are you telling me this is a green electrified we fence? We are turning into a green prison, yes. So we, we, we barbecue escapees, but it's it's solar powered, so it's, it's totally green. environmental. Right? It's green. <laughs> Salinas Valley State Prison's progressive for more than just its green fence. Despite being a level four maximum security facility, it's also leading the search for solutions in an era where America can no longer afford to keep two million people incarcerated. My escort, Lieutenant Chamberlain, led me to Charlie Yard, the highest security yard at the prison. These are the worst guys in the state, in the state with the most prisoners in the country. We're just gonna walk right out onto the yard? That's what we do. <laughs> That's what we do. The first time I came over here at this facility, I mean, just look at it right now, it's all concrete everywhere you're going. There's literally the hair on the back of your neck kind of stands up thinking, what am I doing here, you know? What kind of crimes are the guys on this yard in for? Uh, you're gonna have guys that are here that are gonna be murderers, robbers, burglars, probably have some rapists here. When you are on these, you know, maximum security yards, they are more prone to violence, so you need to try to keep it as manageable as possible. Um, just within the last couple months, we have had two shootings. Here? On the yard, yeah. On, on this yard? On this yard, uh, right over there by the handball courts. Um, you had two inmates that were uh, stabbing another inmate. Um, so that met our, our use of force criteria for deadly force. The officer fired many 14. Like most maximum security yards in California prison, Charlie Yard at Salinas Valley is controlled by race-based gangs. Here the gangs have been so violent that inmates on Charlie Yard spent 14 straight years with their activities restricted, which inmates sometimes call a lockdown. Are, are people grouped here by yeah, their affiliation? Gonna, yeah, you definitely when you come onto these yards, everybody, it's kind of, I guess, self-segregation um, with the gangs. All the gangs will uh, break up into their own tables. You can notice, you know, black inmates over here, you got Bloods, Cribs, and Kumis, you know, 405s, you name it. Um, the blacks are usually kind of be in one area. You can have Southern and Hispanics, and you can have Northern and Hispanics, you're gonna have the whites. But recently, Salinas Valley is fighting gang violence not with more force and more lockdowns, but with the most alternative of alternative approaches, something I never imagined witnessing in a maximum security prison. We're learning meditation skills and we're learning mindfulness skills. And our program consists of um, meditation instruction, we talk about Buddhist Dharma, Buddha Dharma, and questions and answers. So we'll start and end with one bell. When I came in, like I, I saw everybody meditating. I saw you guys, you know, praying. Um, but I got to admit, it's it's pretty striking to see it when when you have to wear the cuffs. If, if anything, it will help the practice because it's, uh, it brings us to you know more of awareness of you know our our, our present condition. Since Salinas Valley began implementing rehab programs like these a couple of years back, Charlie Yard has come off of its restricted status. That's an important lesson at a time when America is trying to downsize its prison populations. Driven by politicians eager to show that they were tough on crime, the number of prison inmates in the U.S. quadrupled between 1980 and 2009. America, with 5% of the world's population, had 20% of the world's prisoners. 
For 30 years, the idea for stopping crime has been effectively to just lock everybody up in places like this. Um, but we've kind of reached the sustainable limits of that system. We can't afford to keep building prisons and incarcerating more people. In fact, California prisons had become so overcrowded that in 2011, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that they were in violation of the Eighth Amendment's ban on cruel and unusual punishment and issued mandatory reductions. That meant that the criminals in places like this could be coming to streets like yours. So in a few maverick institutions around the country, they're trying a new approach, which is actually a really old approach. It's called rehabilitation. Rehab programs were brought to Salinas Valley State Prison a couple of years ago by its new warden, Randy Grounds, a former offensive lineman for UCLA who looks kind of like the warden in an action movie, except way more intimidating. Right now, what you'll have is new youngsters coming in that have a date, and uh, the, the uh, pyramid, if you will, the intimidation of the gang will have them doing work and they end up catching more crimes, more, more uh, charges. They end up extending their date out or and becoming a lifer. Uh, we've got to do something that uh, gets cultures to, uh, and STGs to, to head in a different direction. So what I'm trying to do is just encourage people getting out on the yard first, getting more program, and bringing in some experts that can be mitigators or, or uh, you know, people that will help people get together and talk. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to fill the space. Uh, there's a chance for, uh, if nothing else, for life to be here better and provide some more opportunities for people that want to do other things and maybe be at that point in their, their incarceration that they're looking at a life or date. There's uh, that political pendulum has swung and uh, it's hard to paint that picture for people on a level four, but just FYI, their second life for did get his date happened uh, happened a couple of days happened yesterday. So, oh, on too. Yeah, nice. yeah. Nice. All right, gentlemen, you take day. care. You too now. Yeah, second life for I got a date. Wow. It's second in the history of this 18-year-old institution. So it's a it's a change. He's been away, locked up for when he's young and dumb and feeling cocky. But now he's stopping, cause he's tired of feeling lost in the faces of his family and wife. He's finally caught him, hence the problem. All this kumbaya was making me feel warm and fuzzy. I almost forgot that I was hanging out with 900 murderers. And then the shit hit the fan. It's day two at the prison, just got here, and there's already a stabbing this morning. Yeah, yeah that was one of the ones covered from today. 